Hello everyone, my name is Aaron Standard and today I'm gonna to go ahead and cover how we can build headless Aka.net services using the Microsoft.extensions.hosting package and the iHosted service abstraction. So this information applies to anyone who's trying to build Aka.net services using .NET Core or .NET 5 and later. So what is the Microsoft.extensions.hosting NuGet package? It's a common set of abstractions that are designed to make it easy for anybody to host any kind of .NET service, uh, whether you're using ASP.NET Core, uh, whether you're building a real-time application using something like gRPC or SignalR, or if you want to build a headless service like the type we're going to build using Aka.net, uh, the Microsoft.extensions.hosting NuGet package contains all sorts of standard abstractions that are designed to make it easy to use that and to integrate other abstractions that are pretty commonly found in .NET, such as dependency injection, logging, and configuration. And the package will go ahead and give you a somewhat standard experience for configuring all those things across any service type. And on top of that, Microsoft.extensions.hosting is fairly composable. You can go ahead and have one process that might include ASP.NET Core, might also include SignalR, and it might also include Aka.NET. It's very easy to go ahead and run all of those using the host builder that's included inside this package. What is a headless Aka.NET service? Well, a headless service typically means a service that has no public interface. Uh, back in the 1980s you know, and 90s, a headless service meant literally a machine that had no keyboard or display on top of it. You could only connect to it over the network. But these days, we typically mean that there's no way to actually invoke the service directly by calling a public method on it, and it doesn't really expose any sort of user-facing interface of any kind. However, headless services can be invoked by passing it messages using private messaging technologies such as Aka.net, or perhaps something more along the lines of Kafka, RabbitMQ, Azure Service Bus, and so forth. Headless services are primarily designed to perform background work that supports a customer-facing application of some kind, such as indexing, aggregation, notifications, personalization, that sort of stuff. Headless services can be stateful. Uh, for instance, aggregation and indexing are good examples of stateful applications uh, that might be built as a headless service. Uh, or it could be a stateless service. So for instance, maybe your Aka.NET headless service is responsible for you know, sending push notifications or emails. That'd be an example of a stateless headless service. So let's go ahead and take a look at a demo that shows how we can go ahead and incorporate Aka.NET into an iHosted service and run it smoothly while taking advantage of dependency injection and some of the other Microsoft abstractions that are provided for us in these packages. So for our code sample, we're going to go ahead and use the cluster.webcrawler repository, which is part of Petabridge's GitHub organization. So we're going to go ahead and clone this and run it locally. Now, the uh, web crawler application actually consists of four different services, uh, one of which is pulled in via a public uh, Docker hub image, but the other three are actually all deployed as part of the solution. So we have two headless services and one web application inside of this. So both of our headless services are more or less identical, but let's take a look at the tracker service, which is a stateful headless service responsible for indexing all the uh, domains that we're gonna be crawling using the web crawler. So in here, we've installed the Microsoft.extensions.dependencyinjection.nuget package. And if I take a look at the project file, you can go ahead and see that we've installed uh, Microsoft.extensions.hosting, and we've also installed uh, some of the logging uh, packages as well for Microsoft.extensions. So we're all using version 5.0 for that because this is a .NET 5 application. So in our program.cs, we're going to go ahead and create a host builder. Uh, this is what you use to go ahead and create a host that's going to run uh, any of your background services uh, that might be part of your application. So I'm going to go ahead and call configure services on it. I'm going to add some logging to go ahead and write some debug logging out to the console here. But most importantly, I'm gonna add an iHosted service, this tracker service right here. This tracker service is going to have a discrete lifecycle where it is started and stopped. Uh, this is very similar to what Windows services would look like back in traditional sort of .NET framework development. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and configure all of our services down here. And then we're gonna go ahead and call build and this will give us a completed host. And then we just go ahead and have our main method a wait on host.run async. And so this await call won't exit until 
we go ahead and attempt to terminate the process, at which point all of these hosted services will have their stop async method called. And when that task completes, the process will be allowed to exit. So let's take a look at the tracker service. So to create an iHosted service, we just have to implement the iHosted interface from Microsoft.extensions.hosting. And in our constructor, we can go ahead and take any DI dependencies we might need. In our case, we're actually going to take a dependency directly on the iService provider. That way we can use the Aka.dependency injection NuGet package for any actors that might themselves have dependencies that are registered with our DI container. Inside program.cs, we actually go and register all of our DI dependencies here inside the configure services method. Now, if I go back, you can see this start async method here. Uh, this is where we're gonna go ahead and actually create our actor system. So we're gonna start by parsing uh, some Hocon from this uh, little tracker.hocon file here. We're gonna create a bootstrap setup, which is a type of a programmatic configuration option in Aka.net. We're gonna go ahead and use this extension method that is uh, specific to this application. Uh, we're basically just calling aka.bootstrap.docker under the hood to inject some environment variables. And then we're gonna specify that we're gonna go ahead and use uh, the cluster uh, as part of our actor reference provider. Uh, you actually don't need to do this because our Hocon file actually specifies uh, right here that we wanna go ahead and use the cluster actor ref provider. But still, for the sake of completeness, I thought we should include that there. Next, we're gonna create a service provider setup uh, that's gonna take a reference on our service provider. This is gonna help us create the actor system extension that's going to allow us to use uh, the Microsoft.extensions.dependencyinjection infrastructure over and over again in the future. Then we're gonna merge these two setups together. Uh, if you have any additional setups, such as ones for configuring serializers, or maybe you might have one for configuring Phobos to help uh, get some telemetry inside your application, you'd go ahead and just call and on that, that setup here as well. Finally, we're gonna pass this actor system setup into our actor system. Uh, you can do also do things here like turn on petabridge.command, and then we're gonna instantiate our actors, and then we're gonna return a completed task. And once this is done, Anything that depends on this iHosted service being available, we'll be able to get a hold of it down here. Now, when the process gets signaled that it's time to exit, it's going to go ahead and make sure the stop async task completes first. So what we're going to go ahead and do here is we're just going to run coordinated shutdown on the actor system, and we're going to specify that the reason why we're doing this is because the CLR is exiting. Uh, theoretically, you should just be able to call actorsystem.terminate down here and return the task from that method as well, and that will actually run this under the covers. But again, for the sake of being explicit, I wanted to go ahead and include this here. So as long as you do both of these things, your actor system should be able to start and stop no problem inside the iHosted service lifetime. In fact, let's go ahead and check out a little demo of this. So I'm going to go ahead. I've already built a Docker image that has all this code inside of it. So I'm just going to call uh, Docker Compose up, and I'm going to spin up a little four node Aka.NET cluster here. All right, that looks like it's finished. If I take a look at my little web crawler stack here, I can go ahead and see all my services. And let's take a look at our tracker service. So we can go ahead and see some logging from Docker Bootstrap. Uh, we can see Aka.Remote starting up, and we can go ahead and see uh, that we have successfully joined a cluster. So it looks like everything should be working behind the scenes, no problem. So if you want to use this type of iHosted service setup for your own Akadana applications, uh, Petabridge actually ships a couple of .NET new templates that will help you get up and running with this exact same structure right away. Uh, first, after you go ahead and install our .NET new templates uh, using this syntax up here, you can go ahead and create a brand new headless Aka.cluster service by calling .NET new PB Aka cluster and then passing in the name of your application here. And we also have a matching template that'll give you a clustered uh, web application where ASP.NET and Aka.NET kind of coexist inside the same host. And you can use the Aka web template for that here. And if you want to learn more, we'll drop a link to this in the show notes, but you can go to github.com slash Petabridge, Petabridge.net new, and see all of the different uh, configuration details about each of these templates here. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, please go ahead and leave them in the comments or join us in Gitter chat. Thank you very much.